everyone, hello there. Good morning, everyone. There are still seats here. If you stood at the back, there are still um, seats. If you sat in the pews and you've got bags and stuff, if you just kind of squish in a bit, there might be a little bit more um, space. Winter ledges as well, we've got seat, seats there. So if you want to come and get a seat from here, over at the side there, there's some behind the uh, piano. If you'd like to hide, you can go and sit there. And if you've got bags on the pews, if you just kind of move them in a bit.
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Just before we begin, can we just do a couple of announcements? Can you just give me a second at the back there, please? I'll just be loud. Let's do it that way. If you could please just check that your phone is not going to be the phone that's going to ring in the next hour, that would be really great. Someone's phone will ring. Let's make sure it's not yours. If you need to use the toilet, can you make your way back down the stairs you've just come up? You'll find them down there. This service is being live streamed. If for any reason you should not appear on the stream, can I ask you to let one of the live streaming team, this gentleman here, if you let him know, we can make sure you, we do our best to make sure you don't appear on the stream. I'm going to ask you, please, if you take any pictures or film today in church, that you please don't use, don't use flash. And can you also check with the people in the picture or the film before you post it uh, online? We don't want to get people into trouble because they've come here today when they should be in work. Let's not get anyone sacked. It has happened, believe me. We don't expect the alarms to go off today. If the alarms do ring, you will know because they're very loud. If you can make your way back, um, if they do ring, those of you towards the back of church, make your way down the stairs at the back of the church, carefully cross the road and wait there. Those of us towards the front will go down the stairs behind the wall on that side of church. We will meet there, uh, we'll cross the road and meet there. We don't expect the, the alarm string to date, so please, if they do, treat it as a real thing and carefully, gently make your way out of the building. I'm going to go and pray with the fa family. So in a few se seconds, I will ask you to stand, but just for now, let's pause together. as we gather here today to say goodbye and to give you thanks. We pray that you will give us the strength that we need, that you will hold us in your love, keep us and be with us. Fill us with your love and hold us in your peace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're able, can I ask you to please stand.
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, will live. And anyone who lives and believes in me will never die. He said, do not let your heart be troubled. You trust in God, so trust in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and I go there to prepare a place for you. Because I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus also said, my peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. Adeline, Lynn's family and friends, welcome. We're here today to say goodbye and to celebrate her life. Sadly, some of you who can't be here have jo joined us online today. So we do welcome people joining us from uh, the States, St. Lucia, Jamaica, and elsewhere. Thank you for being here today uh, to join here with us. I hope you feel a much a, as much a part of today's service as we do here. Everyone that knew Adeline knew her in their own unique way. I'm sure she'll be very touched to know you've gathered in whatever way you can today to say your goodbyes. Everyone that knew her knew her in their own way. And that's important to remember. It's your relationship. It's how you knew her and how she touched your life that we're here to celebrate. But we have gathered because the human life you shared with her has come to an end. Today is a time of parting, of loss, of sadness, but also a time of thanksgiving and of hope. Death doesn't bring to an end her influence or the love and the respect she was held with during her life. They are powerful for as long as she is remembered. She was made in the image of God, and every moment of her human life she has been a dearly loved child of God. Her death doesn't alter God's love for her. She will always bear God's name. She will always be beautiful in the eyes of the God who created her. But at the heart of death there is mystery. There is so much we can't know or understand. Because death marks for every one of us a boundary between the life we have in this world and that new life with God beyond death. Today we're pausing at that boundary, not knowing what lies beyond our seeing, our hearing, or our imagination. And yet by faith, we do grasp God's promise that was clearly declared in the resurrection of Jesus that we do not die into oblivion, because we are reborn and we are changed. In sorrow, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, and so we comfort one another in our grief. We thank God for a beautiful life and we show our support to you, Adeline's closest family and friends. Let's pray together. I invite you to pray with me. Creator God, you have made the rhythms and patterns of creation and just as you've given us birth, so you are there when death has come. You have made us mortal beings of frail flesh and of gentle spirit and you've given us a span of life, a time to be born and a time to die. Today we do see the value of life and we are glad it's lived within the fullness of your love. Loving God, you comfort those who mourn. So as we gather, we believe you share our love for Adeline and you know our sense of loss at her death. Assure us of your love Hold us in your strength today and in all the days to come. If we're feeling lost and sorrowful, we pray you'll hold us. If sadness and regret have filled us, give us your peace. If we're cast down and low in spirit, <coughs> keep us safe until we know the fullness of love and life again. God of all creation, Jesus, the risen one, Holy Spirit, that brings us hope in new life. We give you our praise and we claim your love today as every day. Let's share the words of the Lord's Prayer with each other as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing together. Let's stand as we're able as we sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. do sit down. We turn to scripture and I invite Miss Adeline's great-granddaughter, great-great-granddaughter, no great-granddaughter, sorry, to come and read our first reading for us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you very much. We're going to sing together again. Our next hymn is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. During the singing of this hymn, an offertory will be taken for the work of the church. But let's stand as we're able as we sing. Blessed Assurance.
This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Thank you very much. Please do be seated. Monica, can I invite you to give a tribute about your mother? try and do this. Thank you so much to everyone for being here today to celebrate the life and honor the memory of my beautiful queen. To explain just how much my mother means to me. Explain just how much my mother means to me is an impossible task, but I want to make sure that I pay tribute to my mother at her funeral. My mother was one of the strongest, bravest and kindest humans to grace this planet. Without her, I wouldn't be here today. I'm right, I'm right. I wouldn't be the person I am and I, wouldn't be, and I wouldn't have the life I have. She is everything to me and more. And there's no way I could, have, I could ever quantify the importance that she's held in my life. My mother was the best mother a person could ask for. She would say, I love you. I know I don't say it often enough. Yes, she's right. She didn't say it often, but she would show it. As people say, actions speak louder than words. Mum made sure her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren didn't go without. To be honest, she wasn't just our mum. She was our mother, grandmother, to plenty others. My mum was a childminder, or as I call her, unofficial foster carer, because my mum would open up her home to anyone that needed a bed for a night or two. We had a very busy household, and it was fun. My mum was one of those parents that if we was playing outside with the neighbour's children and we came in and asked for an ice lolly, she would say, how many of you is outside? And if I was to say three and she only had two lollies, she would say no because I can't give you and don't give the others. It wouldn't be fair. My mum installed a lot, of, a lot of her ways in me. She would always say be kind to people and treat them the way you would like them to treat you. Always give with a good heart and don't expect anything back. My mum is one of the reasons why I'm a foster parent today. Mum, your work on earth is now finished, but your legacy lives on. There are no goodbyes for us. Wherever you are, you would always be in, in our heart. Love you, Mum. Rest in peace. Thank you. 
Adeline's sister Shirley isn't here today. I don't know if you're joining us today online, but thank you for this. She sent what she was going to say to us in church for us to watch. So let's just pause together and watch. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you all for coming out to celebrate with us the homegoing service of our beloved Sister Lynn. We appreciate you. God bless you. Tribute to a dear sister and aunt. Today we are sad and weary. Our hearts are aching too. For the one we love so dearly has forever gone away. On September 4th, 2023, God in his infinite wisdom commanded his angels to silently remove from our midst our beloved sister and aunt. But since you are at rest, we dare not question why, for God alone knows best. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. No one knows how much we miss you. No one knows the bitter pain. Life will never be the same as we live on without you. We'll think of you in silence. No eyes may see us weep, but many silent tears are shed when others are asleep. God knew that you were suffering. He knew that you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well and hurt again. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, Peace be thine. My sister, you are a special gem sent from above, and your memories will forever remain with us. From your sister Shirley, nephews Gary, Ricky, and Rowan, grandnieces and nephews, we love you, but Jesus loves you best. Rest in peace. Sister Lynn. To the rest of the family, I encourage you to be in unity. Love one another as the songwriter pens it. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Love you all. God bless. If she isn't online today can you give her our, our thanks for for that thank you very much i do hope that you are though but if you if you aren't please do accept our thanks donald uh are you going to sing for us or are you going to speak <coughs> greetings to everyone i'm just going to sing a song and it goes like this. God give life and he take it away. He is a potter and I am the clay. When I reach the low sunset, and the storm cloud rolls away. I hear the voice of patient singing and that homecoming day. Oh, what a sunrise it's going to be. Death will lose its thing. The grave, the victory, the silence will be broken and the storm cloud rolls away. I hear the saints of ancient singing and at home coming day. Time will come. For the last goodbye Death will take us But only to sleep in the arms 
of our Savior so sweet. So hold what a sunrise it's going to be. Death will lose its thing, the grave, the victory, the silent will be broken. Oh, the silence will be broken and the storm cloud rolls away. I hear the saints of ancient singing and at home coming day. Dorothy, can I ask if you would give your tribute, please? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is my personal farewell to my sister, Lynn. <clears throat> oh, Lord, the giver of life, you call my sister, Lynn, from the darkness into your wonderful light, and she has now returned to you. My dear sis, if tears could build a stairway and memories a lane, I would walk straight up to heaven and bring you back again. God saw that you were tired and weak and that a cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw your last breath leave your body. Your golden heart stopped beating. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to say that. Your last breath leave your body. Although we love you dearly, we could not make you stay. Your golden heart stopped beating and your hard working hands come to rest. Our hearts are broken, but God prove that he only takes the best. You are now in heaven with mom and dad, with Jesus by your side. Our heart still aches with sadness, and many tears will flow. What it meant to lose you, no one will ever know. We hold you close within our hearts, and there, will, and there we, you, will, you will remain to walk with us, through our lives until we meet again. Farewell, my sister Lynn. You are gone, but not forgotten. Rest in peace. Thank you. And I invite Carisha to please give your tribute. Good morning, everyone. Um, so this is not actually my tribute. Um, if you all know my grandma, you know she likes to be in charge of everything. Um, when she passed, she had a little black book that she left for us to just read um, stuff that she wanted to be done. And um, as I flicked through it, I saw at the front that um, she had literally she wrote a funeral tribute. When life, when life seems unfair and you lose someone that's there to you, when questions fill the heart and the answer cannot be found, may it help to know that your loved ones is in God's hands and that others are thinking of you at this time. May it help to know that God's presence will never stray and that he is only a moment away. May he answer you whenever you call and give strength from above. May he give you comfort during this difficult time and ease the pain as time goes by. May he give you all peace and help you all carry on through life strong. At this difficult time, 
May these words convey a message of hope for each other. Rest in peace. Our second scripture reading is from the letter to the church in Rome, and Dwayne is going to read that for us. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's sing together our next hymn. I invite you to stand with me as we sing. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Let's stand and sing.
Please do sit down, thank you. Sometimes you can't beat the old ones, can you? That was beautifully sung, thank you everyone. I'm going to invite Dwayne to read the eulogy on behalf of um, Dorothy, who's written it for us, thank you. I would like to read this eulogy on behalf of my auntie Dorothy, my grandma Adeline's sister. Adeline Stennett, my dear sister, was born on the 14th of November 1946 in the Coffee Ground district of Seaford Town, Westmoreland, Jamaica, to our beloved mother, Evelyn Eldermeyer Thomas, and her late father, Stanton Stennett. Adeline also had two younger siblings, Shirley and Noel Stennett, aka Sam. Our mother, Evelyn, left Jamaica to better her life, and during this time, Adeline had her eldest children, Raymond in 1967 and Monica in 1969. Mum worked hard after arriving in the UK, and she sent for Adeline in 1970. Raymond and Monica remained in Jamaica with their grandparents. Adeline's first job was with myself, making hats for Jacob's Millinery, I hope I pronounced that correctly, but she didn't enjoy this type of work. She stuck it out for six weeks so she could get a work permit and remain in the UK. 
She too worked very hard and saved enough money to send for Raymond and Monica in May 1981. Adeline, or Lynn as most of, you know, most of you here know her as, continued to be a very hard worker and was also very punctual. Some, some of the jobs she did were working for London Transport at New Cross Bus Garage. She was a cleaner at Guy's Hospital. Um, she was a childminder, of which many of you here, born around the 80s especially, may remember being those very children, and working with young adults with special needs at Rockaby House. She was also a cook at the following places, Carrington House, Palace Bingo, the Old Thameside Inn, Peckham Settlement, and Home Catering. And finally, at Turnham Primary School, for which she retired. During this time, Adeline met and fell in love with Keith Jokes. Together, they had two more children, Paul in 1974, and David in 1977. Both Adeline and myself had one daughter and three sons. As we all know, Adeline continued with her catering business, which grew and grew. She and her team were always there for any family occasion to provide the delicious array of West Indian food. She was a humble woman and often had to be gently dragged out of the kitchen at various functions so that she could be publicly thanked for all her hard work. She would then immediately return to get on with her work, preparing, serving, cleaning, and packing away with such efficiency. Adeline left behind four children, six grandchildren, eight great-grandchildren, one niece, and six nephews, 11 great-nieces and nephews, four great-great-nieces and nephews. And we must not forget, forget those of you who are many who called, her, who called her mum, nanny, and auntie. You are all, without a shadow of a doubt, family too. Lynn's hobbies were going to bingo, cooking, baking, and gardening. She loved her plants and vegetables. The last time I looked at her garden, there was quite a few pumpkins. She told Monica that they were her babies and that she'd better look after them. Remember that, yeah? <laughs> Can anyone remember the red geranium that Lynn grew outside her front door while she was living at Poulton House? Those geraniums flourish like no other I've ever seen. All year, all year round, they look dazzling. It goes without saying that Lynn was well-loved by all her family and friends. She will not be forgotten. She now rests in peace with mum, dad, and the Lord Jesus by her side. Finally, I will end this eulogy with John... 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that, whoever, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Rest in peace, my dear sister Adeline. Thank you very much. We're going to watch another tribute that has been sent to us today and this is from... Uh, Norma and Ray. <coughs> Over 60 years ago, we came together. Over 60 years ago, we came together in the hills of St. James in Trinidad as a family. Looking back at those days, some people say those were the good old days. Others would think of it as the bad old days. When Outdoor plumbing was the norm and electricity was light years away. Still, we had fun together. We did the normal things, like we would look after the cows, giving them water, move the goats around, and doing other things as children. That was normal for us. But what we loved most of the time was when we had a farm days of work when my grandmother or uh, our grandmother would be cooking oh boy it was sumptuous she would cook dumplings and yams and some chicken or some other tasty meat and we would sure to have a good belly full because we would work hard for that meal 
But Alin being Alin, sometimes we take it a little further. You see, sometimes my grandmother will go out to do certain things like go to the market or elsewhere. And Alin knowing that it will take a little time, she will be ready to grab when there was poor cock chicken and she would have the water and the basket ready. And wham! Oh, she was plucking chicken and she had the pot ready to do the cooking. And sooner in a couple of hours, we would have a nice belly full of chicken and yam and dumpling and with some sugar and water or some wash to cool our thirst. Poor grandmother will even notice that when she came back home. It's very difficult to look back and think that 60 plus years has gone already and Adeline has grown to a position where she had children, grandchildren and even great grandchildren. And today she's gone. She has lived a full life and God has taken her to eternal rest. As long as we live, you will live on in our hearts. Gone but not forgotten. Surely missed by Ray, Norma, Wellington Rural, and other relatives to mourn. Rest in peace, dear cousin Adeline. And again, can you give him our thanks? That was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you if you are watching. Colleen, could I ask you to give your tribute, please? Hello. Thank you. Good morning, church. I first met Adeline in 1976 when we worked at London Transport New Cross Bus Garage together in the canteen. We had a supervisor called Mr. Adams who had a nickname for us all. Adeline's nickname was Legs due to her lovely pins. Adeline was always a hard worker. Her children were always her priority. We heard a lot about Raymond and Monica before they even arrived in the UK. Raymond and Monica, Adeline, and she was so excited when Raymond and Monica joined her and the rest of the family when they came over from Jamaica, Hadley and her late husband, Keith, were known for their fantastic parties. There was always lots of food, drink, and fun to be had. When Rita and I, a very, another very close friend of Hadley, visited her in hospital the last time before she went home, she said her mind was set on Jesus and she had no regrets. Hadley, we remembered all the kindness he said it takes a village to grow children. And I remember when my kids were young, Adeline and Rita were my very close friends to this day. We might not see each other every day, but I know every morning before I even open my eyes, there was a WhatsApp message from Adeline. Adeline, your life was one of selflessness and love. You will always be remembered. Rest in peace. And now the reading death is nothing at all. Death is nothing at all by Henry Scott Holland. Death is nothing at all. It does not count. I have only slipped away into the next room. Nothing has happened. Everything remains exactly as it was. I am I and you are you. And the old life that we lived so fondly together is untouched, unchanged. Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. Call me by my old familiar name. Speak of me in the easy way you always used. Put no difference in your tone. Wear no false day of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes that we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without an effort. 
without the ghost of a shadow upon it. Life means all that it ever meant. It's the same as it ever was. There is absolute and unbroken continuity. What is death but a negligible accident? Why should I be out of mind because I am out of sight? I am but waiting for you for an interval, somewhere very near, just round the corner. All is well, nothing is hurt, nothing is lost. One brief moment and all will be as it was before. How we shall laugh at the trouble of parting when we meet again. Thank you. On behalf of this church, it's an honour for us to celebrate the life of one of our own today. Thank you for bringing her back to us. Sometimes when you gather with a church full of people, it's obvious the theme of the day. And the theme of today in my mind is hospitality and love. Everything you've said is about the love you've been given. Everything has been about opening doors, making space, making room at the table. I'm sure you have to shove your elbows out every now, now and then. But it's about making space. It's about providing love. And that's why I think the Romans reading that last bit is really important. Neither death nor life nor angels, demons, the present nor the future, nor neither powers or heights or deaths or anything in creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And that's the same love that Lynn is wrapped up in now. And she's wrapped up in that love. That love holds us as well. I've been thinking a lot about the psalm that we heard before. And this week I've been kind of walking with those words as I've been preparing for uh, today. And they are a psalm about struggle and pain. David, as he wrote it, was at his lowest point. He got things a little bit bad. Um, things weren't great for him. But he knew that God was with him because God is always with those whose hearts hurt. God is always there. The message of Psalm 23 and much of the Bible, if we're honest, is that God's love is always found clearly when suffering is happening. God is not distant when we struggle. We may not see God with us, but God is there. We believe very clearly in the life of the church that God experiences our pains with us. We may be racked and hurt by the pains we're facing. We've arrived today with hearts that hurt, haven't we? This shouldn't be happening yet. But like David, I hope we too can find comfort and solace in the presence of God's love. It was in the presence of God that David found the space to give God praise. Today may not be a day to praise God, and that's fine. You may not be in a mood to praise, but you know, God is with you. God is always with you. God never leaves you. Something else we firmly believe in the life of the church is that love can never die. Because love is too perfect. It can't be bruised or tarnished or damaged. Love never leaves us. It may be a little bit different, but it never goes. And what is very clear in this room at the moment is the amount of love. There's so much love in this room. For this incredible woman. But also for all of you. Because you're sharing love with each other today. Those of you that join us online, you're, you <coughs> share your love with us as well. And we share ours T-T-U-T. Miss Adeline, you have returned to the God who loves you and who created you. 
You are now at one with the dance of nature, the planets and the stars. You are free from pain. You are whole again and complete. Your battle with your illness is done. This is time for you to rest for once. Be happy. Be whole, be reunited with your loved ones who've journeyed ahead of you. Thank you for all that you are. Thank you for all that we are because of you. Thank you for the space you made at the table of love you provided for everyone. So my sister, rest in God's eternal peace. And on that great day when we meet again, rise in glory. Amen. Can I invite you to pray with me? God, source of all life, mysterious, profound, and generous in love. We thank you because we've seen you in Miss Lynn. We thank you for her life, for all that she was, for all that she still is, for all that she gave of herself to her family, to friends, to the community around her, and to anybody who needed her help. We thank you for her faith. We thank you for what she was to each of us. We thank you that she was such a wonderful lady that we are moved to grief and sorrow today by her loss. We pray you'll help us through her death to see more clearly the significance of her life, to grasp more firmly the hope that we are more than our years, and remind us that love is much stronger than death. We pray for ourselves. We recognize we are disturbed by the mysteries of death. We know we're facing questions that have been raised. We know we're dealing with loss. Let us not be overwhelmed. Let us face honestly what confronts us. Let us have this time of sorrow quite freely and openly so we can return to life again with courage and with hope. As we honour Adeline, we do commit ourselves to care for one another, to bring hope to the despairing, to bring joy to those in sorrow. We pray you will be with us today and in all the days to come. Help us to live as those who remember the past and who have great hope for the future. All of this we pray in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. I believe Adeline chose the hymns for today. Is that right? Okay. So as she did choose them, and as she did choose this one, I expect you to sing, sing it loudly. Let's stand as we're able and sing, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. I know. 
able to, can I ask you to please remain standing as we commend Adelaide to God's care. Eternal God, who gives us life and in whose arms we die, we entrust Adeline to your safekeeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Receive one of your own, one in whom you've been at work and one who is carrying our love with her. Welcome her into your presence, into the rest of everlasting peace, and into the company of the saints. Loving God, in the mystery of your eternity, we are not separated from her, for your love will always hold us together. While we live, she will never be forgotten. In your love, she can never be lost. May our memories of her enrich our lives. May the good things of her leave trace on earth. And may your keeping of her glorify heaven. Depart, Christian soul, from this world in the name of God the Father Almighty who created you. In the name of Jesus Christ who redeemed you. In the name of the Holy Spirit who sanctified you. So Adeline, it's your turn to rest. Your work is done. Rest in God's eternal peace. Rise again in glory. Amen. Please do sit down. Following the blessing, you'll get your chance to come and pay your last respects to Lynn and to her family. We have got time today, so I'm going to ask you to please come and pay respects and then go back to, to your seats so that we can let Lynn leave church first today. It's, it's a right. After we leave here, we make our way to Camberwell New Cemetery. Let's receive the blessing of God. Go into the world in the love of Jesus. Go knowing you are restored, you are strengthened and supported by God's love. Go and live out the example of love that Adeline has left with you. And may the blessing of God be with you, creator, son and spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. As people do come and pay their respects, Sarah is going to play for us again.
Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, if I can have your attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? We are going to have to leave church very soon. So if you could save your heatings until we've left, then that's good. If you can give the family a short time here together as well, that would be helpful. If you could, please, either make your way out of church or find a seat now for me, please. And then the family can pray together.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to invite the family to join me around the coffin. If I could ask everyone else to give us some quiet while we pray together. So we're going to pray as a family around the coffin. If I could ask everybody else to please take a seat and please give us a little bit of quiet. We're going to pray together now. So if you could please give us some quiet. gather. Holy and gracious God, we thank you that you have welcomed home your precious child, Lynn. Because of your love for us, we entrust her to your peace, and we entrust ourselves to your care. We thank you for the years shared, for the precious memories that remain, for the legacy of love that we will always treasure. Now we turn to you for hope, for strength, and for comfort. We cling to your promise to be with us always. Guide us in the ways of your love and hold us in your peace. Loving God, we thank you for everything that Lynn means to us. We thank you for everything she shared, for the opportunity she gave us, for the example she has left with us, for the hope that will forever burn within us. Go as we go from here, we pray you will continually go with us and help us remember you have got us safe in your love. She is with you, and one day we will be with her again. Thank you, loving God, for all that she means to us. Thank you for the ways we have been changed by her. Living God, wrap us in your peace. Miss Lynn, rest in God's eternal peace and rise in glory. Amen. Could I invite the pallbearers to come forward, please? Ladies and gentlemen, if you could clear the aisles for me, please, because we're going to leave now. So if you could please not block the aisles. If I should stay, I would only be in your way, so I'll go, but I know I'll think of you. Every step of the way and I
Thank you.